Hey everybody, it's uh, Slappy McPhee uh, here from the Retro Arena and we're going to be going over some initial thoughts and discussions and a little bit of um, game capture here from the new upcoming Odroid N2. We've got John Manning with us, the lead tester. How's it going guys? And we've got uh, Qbert who is our senior tester. Hey, what's up? And then we have Eric, who is our master compiler and all-around amazing developer. Do, 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 do. Wow. Hey. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's who we have with us today on this video. Um, of course, we've also got the, the other uh, guys in the team that have received some uh, developer kits. So... First of all, we want to go ahead and mention, of course, that this is an alpha stages. Yeah, there's been a lot of work that's been done, but uh, at the end of the day, of course, just like everything else that we have seen going on with um, the N2 in the debugger party itself, you know, we are in an alpha. However, I think that we've made some really good strides with our um, emulation station based uh, build. So, um, what we have here presented on the screen is a capture from the uh, N2, and um, this has got a 5 terabyte external drive connected to it currently. Um, and I think probably what we want to do is kind of hit some, at, at first anyway, at least in the comparison to the XU4, what we're seeing initially here as an example um, of some improvements and things that we've been able to add as features and functionality. Um, one of those things is is that we do have a full mate desktop accessible from the ES system selection and um, I think we'll go ahead and take a look at that here first if you can scroll on over to that uh, Hubert and uh, Eric do you have anything to, to share about the the desktop implementation mm -hmm. Tell you one thing, it boots very, very, very fast. Look at that. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. Okay. It works. It works very well, actually, Eric. <laughs> I was very, I was surprised. It would actually get you, if you needed, to, you know, needed something, you could actually use it. This is the first time running it. It's only that takes us long the first time after it's uh, been run and set up. It runs. Perfectly fine, no problem. Let's go to YouTube. Yeah, I think that this is going to be a um, an enhancement for our build that uh, is going to make several members in the community happy. Um, ah, better close it. Copyright, copyright, copyright. <laughs> there we go. That's all right. <laughs> um. Thank you for the information. Yeah, there we go. Low disk space. I don't know what he's talking about. So, um, you know, we this is kind of the, the basic uh, concept here then. So when we're moving out of this or switching out of this um, back to the ES interface, uh, Eric, how is that performed? Are we just clicking uh, on the ES we, shortcut? Yeah, does it automatically kill the X session or do we have to do a logout? It, it should... Uh... Kill the X session, bring you back to emulation station, but currently the audio drops out. Ah! Let's see what happens here. We'll be able to tell here in a second. We're good. Actually, audio's okay here now. Hmm. All right. Well, there you go. That's pretty pretty okay. cool. Next. So yeah, so this is a, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, this is a straight 64-bit build, right? The user space is 64-bit as well as the, the OS. 
Yeah, it's all 64 bit. All right, cool. Um, and and it looks like here in the release notes, another difference is is that we're a we're actually leveraging MPV instead of M player for um, the the videos within Emulation Station. Um, our background music does work. Uh, there are a couple hiccups right now currently with it, um, but um, it seems to be pretty stable, right? With that, the uh, network uh, transfer speeds really nice. Um, you don't see the fluctuation like you do on the XU4, and even on the Pine. Uh, you know, like you, we've we've increased our you know transfer speeds and everything on the Pine and the XU4, but it's not a constant rate all the time. With uh, with the N2, it was. So like I'm getting a solid 40 to 60. So I actually can actually do it, you know, over the network. Everything I want to do over the network. That's that's definitely good stuff to hear for sure. Um, so I guess probably here what we can do quickly is um, kind of go over some of the the items right that are currently not available. Uh, they're being worked on. Um, Amaberry is not 64 bit. So the um, the developers uh, already talked with us about that, and he's working on a 64-bit uh, compilation and build, but it's not currently available. Um, we do have a couple of N64 emulators that do work, right, Eric? However, Moopin 64 Plus is is not built yet. Right, I just haven't gotten around to it. Okay. <clears throat> it needs it needs some TLC and patches. Gotcha. Um, LR MAME 2000 fails to compile. However, I believe we've got multiple uh, MAME emulators anyway that were successful. We right? have uh, every single one except that one. Yeah, and that's that's actually pretty big because as an example, compared to the XU4, what is this bringing to the table? Um, because I know that it's bringing a couple more versions of MAME, right? That that the yeah, I'll show you here. Have. I can go into the configuration menu when we boot up. I'll show you all the versions that are available. Hold on, since I have a full main site here. I well, really, it's also for here. anybody who has who has an arcade and wants to use this for their arcade. I mean, that's awesome. The more the more version of, versions of main you have, the better the better compa compatibility for anything. Light gun compatibility, trackball compatibility, depending on the version of main you have. I mean. Since we got advanced yeah, MAME, we're good. It's awesome. Right. I mean, I believe that MAME, what, 2010, 2014, 2016, those all. And I know that, what, 2014 is, is it 2014 is folding up into 2015? Is that what they're calling There's it? There's what we got. Yeah, there we've we go. got 2015. Advanced, here's, what, here's what we have. We have advanced MAME 9414, advanced MAME. Um, Final Burn Alpha, two, uh, LR MAME 2003, 2003 Plus, 2010, 2015, 2016, and LR MAME. Right. And just uh, for those viewing the video, um, just as a heads up, if you see any kinds of fluctuation or anything, this just has to do with uh, the video capture. But, um, you know, there is a little bit of, of um, frame buffer situation or issues, but um, all in all, it should, should be pretty solid. So... Um, We've got what the JS uh, INTV for what is that for the Intellivision, right? That fails to compile. Yeah, that one's that one's um, still no go. L, uh, LR Messen <laughs> fails to compile, which um, I believe LR Messen does compile on the XU4 currently, correct? However, is a little bit slow. So I think once we can get this, is there any technical issues that you're aware of right now, Eric, or is it just something we need to dig into? Uh, we'll we'll need to dig into that one. I I haven't really looked at it recently. Okay. Right. So the assumption, however, though, is is just due to the nature of the performance bump that we've seen with the N2 so far, that it should perform um, at a, at a much better or at least a a noticeably better rate. I'm I'm hoping, you know, once we can get it all figured out and hammer down. Uh, actually, as of today, which is the 30th of uh, March, um, you were able to get the, uh, and I always checked, was it Orcatron? Yeah, I've compiled? got Orcatron compiled and running, OpenMSX, and GS Plus. Yeah, so which I mean, is that's an Apple II GS simulator. Right. So that's pretty cool. I mean, that you're 
that we're being able to make strides, you know, every day and, and move more and more towards a complete package. Now, I, I do see here we've got noted that even though Advanced MAME 9.4 does work, it actually fails to quit its X session, right? So right now, how do you actually, if you go to exit, what do you need to actually do in our in this alpha build? Um, if you have a if you have a mouse plugged in, you're okay. You're able to exit out. Okay. Otherwise, you'll have to terminal in and either kill it and, or do a reboot it. Well, okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can you, you can you can get it out that way. So. Yeah, that's good to know um, then. Um, uh, one thing we could you know yeah. if we're gonna show gameplay now or. Um, uh, just here in in another few minutes. Okay, sorry um, about that. Gonna I'm go anxious. over. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I know, and it's exciting, right? So, but yeah, so XM7 is failing to compile. We got to dig into that. Um, a couple of the ports, like Open Fodder and Z Doom, are failing to compile. So we'll need to dig into those. Um, so we've kind of got a mixed environment here. Some of them are actually using um, an X session, right, Eric? So some of those take longer to launch because of that, just inherently. I'll tell you what, the running off of a hard drive, the when he says that it takes extra time, I'm talking maybe two seconds. It, it, it's, it, it's nothing. It, it's not a big deal. <laughs> you don't even realize the extra load time, believe it or not. That's pretty good then. Um, yeah. So recently, uh, I guess the last kind of item of note here with that is um, the recast standalone was failing to compile. However, I believe that there was news just in the last day or two that they're merging the Libretro core and the standalone for recast, right? Yes. So <clears throat> that's going to be a, a big thing. Um, something that uh, before we get into the gameplay, um, just some of uh, um, other items to note. Um, it uh, that's kind of exciting is that um, you know with the N2 we'll be able to test using the composite out. So, like with the XU4 right now, people are having to use an HDMI to composite converter if they want to be able to use a, a traditional CRT or, um, you know, a CRT monitor, say, in a cabinet if they want to get really authentic. So that's going to be something really cool to check out. Um, initial testing, I uh, actually went into the um, boot config and changed the output to 4K and used a, a 4k version of the debugger party video that we started this one off with as kind of a an homage to a uh, hard kernel for uh, including us in the um in the debugger party right as, as a thank you but rans runs excuse me buttery smooth I, I plugged it into two different 4k displays i have so um that's actually really cool um that people will have that option now when it comes to actually running the emulators and such in the desktop, we haven't we haven't tested or touched that yet, but um, it's really cool that that 4K actually works, and we don't have to worry about upscaling. the The fact that we've got 4K is is pretty cool for sure. Well, now I'm going to test it because I didn't know there was a option for me to do that. So, oh, there you go. I will be doing that. I got one TV out front. I'm going to have to start testing it. <laughs> so Ex expect a video, guys. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So I'm glad to hear it worked. I didn't know what happened. You asked me to make it a video, but you never told me it worked. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, just the way life is, I got, kind of got <laughs> sidetracked on other things. That's good, though. I'm glad it works. That's awesome. Yeah, because then, you know, at the, at the end of the day, right, I think that'll make it um, – I haven't been able to do much for testing, but I, I'm pretty sure that it'll even run H.265 compression. So that will make things really cool and kind of open things up for the splash videos. Um, nice. and then, you know, Hey, if once people start actually working on converting and creating like, um, the video snap media, kind of getting that, yeah. um, you know, upscaled when that does eventually come, of course, it's going to take a ton of storage, but we're not even going to get into that. Um, is there anything else, Eric, that you kind of wanted to, to possibly mention before we get into some gameplay? No, I don't think so. All right, cool. So yeah, so I mean, essentially we're seeing really good um, performance speeds from EMMC and SD card, I believe. But of course, obviously booting um, from the EMMC is going to be definitely the route you're going to want to go um, that we're seeing anyway, obviously because of the desktop. I'm, 
you know, uh, but real quick, um, Q, you've actually been using the desktop, though, from SD card, right? Yeah, everything I have is SD card and a hard drive that's mounted in FSTAB. Yeah, so, I mean, if you're seeing decent performance in the desktop with, you know, a, a decent quality SD card, then obviously it's going to get even better with EMMC with, with the desktop. Yeah, card. I've been... I've been running mine the same way. Yeah, it's it's a hundred percent usable, a hundred percent. Okay, cool. So yeah, so let's um, I'm I'm gonna actually have you kind of drive some suggestions, Eric, um, and and then you know you as well, uh, Qbert. Um, I know that. Let's go ahead and start things off with a bang. Let's see though uh, how some PSP looks because of course that's kind of one of the measuring sticks that that we use, right, for single board computing um, emulation. I'm excited to see oh, this one. Did I just lose my audio? I lost my audio now. Anytime it goes into screensaver, it loses my audio. Okay. So there you go. That's that's just part of the alpha stage, right? Um, but once but we that's launch... Okay. Hold on one second. I'll just... Now that, that, then... that's not going to necessarily impact though when you're you launch an emulator, right? Because that's a new process. Huh? No, 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 no. It's uh, this is uh, just so I can get it back so you guys can hear the audio because we want to show how there's no skips in audio and stuff like that. So gotcha. It's definitely needed, and I don't want you guys to wait five minutes for it to reboot. <laughs> but what's right. cool is uh, everybody can see here how it boots up, so it has a BIOS like an old computer. Like you can set up, you know, to auto boot and stuff like that. It'll come up here in a second on you guys on my capture. So like right now, I'm... right, and that's the SPI flash with petite boot, yeah. right, Eric? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> so yeah, just to make it clear though, um, someone's not going to have to have a keyboard always plugged into this thing, right? If they're all they're going to do is use it for gaming, they, you know, um, because you can set the petite boot actually to go, like if you never wanted to go into the desktop at all, right? Um, you could get away with just actually using, especially if you're just going to use gamepad ga uh, based games, um, you know, it'll boot with our, our regular splash, right? Welcome back sound. There's our little logo. Even when doing a parse game list only uh, on the same drive, it's much faster on the N2. So, not too bad. Yeah, and I'll um I'll go ahead and I'll actually be um clipping this part out anyway. We'll just show that we're rebooting, you know, it's just part of the audio loss from the alpha or whatever, and then yeah. you know, I'll clip this part out. See, that's but, much quicker if we just do yeah, the Yeah, yeah, that is, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm just saying. It's like, it doesn't do that on the XU4. <laughs> we don't get that option that, that quick with the parse game list only. That's why I use Scraper now, because my game lists are quick and it runs, you know, smooth as crap, so... Yeah, so now we're back, um, and we're going to go ahead and swing on over into uh, PSP. And I believe you wanted to show us some God of War, right, Qbert? Um, Actually, we're uh, gonna first we're going to show Outrun that. first. Yeah, we're going to show okay. Outrun first. Cool. So while you're getting this fired up here, uh, Qbert, and I don't know how much you've actually played around with it, John, but um, regarding it on the XU4, mm -hmm. how does how does it run? Um, it, it runs okay. I mean, it depends on the game, right? So like, uh, like God of War, it it's playable. It, it's just how about you know, um, Outrun? It, it's the definitely one that, not. That, you're that definitely that not playing at full speed. Right. Outrun is it's the same kind of deal. It, it's playable. It it just it, it's not full speed. So, have you done any tweaks to this at all, Qbert, yet or no? 
Uh, yeah, I, I changed some settings in the INI to make it run really nice. As you can see, it's running with uh, frame skip, but um, I'm running at 2x and with you know full artifacts and everything, so it's uh, it's very nice. Only uh, time I have any kind of hiccups is when there's like writes, like where it would write to the memory card or whatever, and that just might be because I have it's you know running off an SD card as opposed to an EMCC. So. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, this game had some graphical glitches on the XU4. Oh, it does, yes. It does. It does, uh, right? Some, yeah, it does. And some of the graphical glitches are still here, um, but um, not as prevalent. Um, what I was going to notice uh, yeah, say is that I noticed that I was going to say that, yeah, I could get the same frame rates on the XU4, but it doesn't look as smooth as it does on the N2. And the VGA, uh, I mean, the uh, colors and everything are just much better. The HDMI is much better. And yeah, uh, so also the sound, when the sound's working right, <laughs> is working, uh, is much better too. Yeah, so just to also point out, um, we'll go ahead and actually post up um, just some separate videos that uh, of the gameplay footage that we play here tonight. Um, I'll go ahead and get those posted up on the YouTube channel and I'll have cards on this video for somebody to go check it out. Uh, obviously, because right now, I mean, you're doing the game capture and I'm capturing this through Discord and then it's going to get uploaded. So obviously right now what we're seeing on this video itself is not indicative of how good the experience actually is on the board. Yeah, I mean, but you can definitely see it. It's running at a high frame rate there, and I know he's got the frame rate up at the top, but it, it is running really, really nicely. Well, that's it's a smooth frame rate, yeah. Uh, I notice sometimes on the XU4 when uh, frame rates, you know, when like frame skipping is enabled, frame skipping doesn't seem very smooth. At least on here, frame skipping seems to be doing its job right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and at the end of the day, I mean, yes, you can be like a frame frame rate nerd. But if you like, you know, what you keep saying, if, if you were to turn that critical. off, you wouldn't be able to tell. Yeah. If you that, were to turn that, that top right off there, but I put that on there for the frame rate nerd, you know? So, <laughs> so right. like if you, were, if you were to take that off there, everybody'd be like, oh, that looks really good. You know? Yeah. So right. cool. Yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, back out of this and head on into the next game. You wanted me to do God of War, right? I yeah, I think yeah, you, you want to turn um, that one off. I can definitely say that I'm going to have to probably uh, change some of the configuration. So I'll show you guys what I would use, at least what I did on Chains of Olympus. <laughs> so right away, you're going to have to just create a game config. Go in the game settings here. Frame skipping is fine with one, and then auto frame skip off. Change this to one PSP. Lazy catch, C. Turn this off so people don't give us a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's go here. I haven't tried Ghost of Sparta, so it says right here that it's running slow, but it's going to be like that because we don't have that option anymore to disable that part. At least I haven't found it. It's probably somewhere else. We probably have the option. So while this is going on in the background, let's let's talk about the experience for this game um, on the XU4 then compared to the to the new and uh, the N2 even where it's at right now. There really wasn't an experience because. Uh, you spent more time like changing your graphic settings at different parts of the game so you could finish and keep going. At least that's what I did. Because mm -hmm. like anytime it got too slow or anything like that, I couldn't continue, you know? 
so it really made me mad. Uh, so far, I haven't had a problem with this yet. There was a couple of places where I was starting to get frustrated, but that was on Chains of Olympus, not Ghost of Sparta. So I haven't tried Ghost of Sparta yet. So okay. we're about to find out. Well, all right. Yeah, Chains of Olympus was the uh, was the game that I that I ran, and, and it it didn't run horribly. Uh, I remember, but um, it, it definitely was not running full speed on the XU4. Yeah. Oh yeah, it, it won't. That and Killzone 2 as well. Yeah. How's the sound and everything? Here it's a little hard, you know. I I can't really get it here, but how how's the sound coming out? Is it coming um, out nice and smooth? Is it choppy or? I was, I was gonna say that once in a while there's a little chop, mm -hmm. but that's because God of War uses its game engine at the same time, so it's like when it's dropping frames. Right. So like the audio like on Outrun was okay because it was a real audio track, you know. So. So I think it's more of it dropping frames, you know, on the actual game than it. Uh, but now this is in game, so. And, well, almost. Hold on. All right. Q drama. Let's play. So, yeah. So, then, just to be clear, this is actually your first game. I mean, this play. is me playing right now. This is the first time game playing without me tweaking really anything more than I figured I'd have to do. And it's actually playing really well without really any kind of glitches. This is actually pretty nice. Yeah, and then, you know, it's just like any other emulator, really, once you get into tweaking it, you can probably uh, squeeze a little bit even more better performance out of it, you know? Yeah, well, what's crazy is that the sound skipping went away, but that might just be because I'm uh, more engrossed that I'm actually getting what seems playable frame rates, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I wasn't able to do this on uh, the XU4 at all. And that, that's always the thing anyway about the God of War games here too, right? Is that it just kind of becomes an an epic pain in the hind end when you're playing at the beginning because it always stops you every so often, or it doesn't always, excuse me, but it does stop you plenty often enough with the, the whole tutorial situation, right? Yeah. But... It, it does look really good though, I'll tell you that. I'm perfectly fine with this, especially since this is an alpha. We haven't tweaked anything, haven't done anything. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm excited about this. This is. This is. Uh, yeah, I didn't lovely. think it was going to do this good. This is the first time I did it. Good thing I uh, got the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, yeah. So now yeah. I want to try ultimate ultimate ghosts and goblins now because now I'm excited the way well, this thing's running. Do, do you have it on this build? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hold on one second, though. I want to see the boss and see if it actually lets me play the mini game stuff. You know. Okay. Might as well try it, right? Yeah. yeah no. Because it's yep. not choking yet. Awesome. Left wow. Roll, roll. Now they're gonna have to find another game. You know. <laughs> it's not gonna be God of War anymore. What's the new? What's the new game? that's not gonna play. Probably Killzone <laughs> Two. <laughs> I'm getting my ass kicked because I was pressing the wrong button and I forgot I mapped my joystick wrong. Take well, that! Well, then there's also going to be Midnight Club, right? That one's also another one that seems to be used a lot for measuring performance, especially on an SBC. Holy crap. And, and I'm not kidding you. For some reason, it seems like as I play, I noticed, I said this before on the uh, Discord forums, as the system starts heating up, it's like it caches something, and all of a sudden, things stop choking. Like, I noticed that with N64 as well. Like, when I was playing Cruise in USA. Right. After I played for about five minutes, it's like if the machine heats up or something like that, it goes into overdrive maybe. I don't know. It's uh, weird. Like and how's the, how's the sound now, like with all this action? It, is it, it's is fine. It, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what's weird. Awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Like, 
but uh, I'll be able to tell better when I'm, um, you know, when I'm editing the video. So there might be some that I'm not picking up because I'm just having fun playing. So well, plus I, I have a headphone on me, you know. I think another thing to be clear about too, and and I'm not saying that this is going to make a difference or not yet at this point because we're still in the alpha, but our dev kits are the four gig RAM boards. Um, you know, I, I don't know if it's going to make how much of a difference, excuse me, it will make or if it makes any at all if someone were to use the two gig model. But, you know, that's going to be a consideration, right? Because the, the four gig model is roughly $15 more than the two gig. And sometimes right. that's enough in a budget for someone to go, eh. but at the end of the day, especially if you want to use the desktop, I would recommend anyway with spending the extra 15 bucks, right? To me, it's a no-brainer, but. Without a doubt. I can't believe this is actually playing. <laughs> It's handling it pretty damn well, man. I'm very surprised. And you got to realize, too, also, you guys are going through our Discord. So my Discord only lets me capture at 30 frames per second. So anything that's above 30 frames per second might look choppy. So it looks different on my TV than it does through this video. Right. And but I have, the, I have the raw video coming in through 60 frames per second that I'll post on my channel that people can look, look at. Right. Yeah, and we can, like I said, we can post cards to that actually on this video so that they can go and check that out. All right, color me impressed.